were saying about with Nicki Minaj, um, that whole situation, uh, the day all that came out, that's the day I decided to take a break from <laughs> 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 Things were crazy. It was actually really funny. I have to say this though. I, I do not support Nicki Minaj. I'm not a fan of hers or anything like that. I actually did a blog post on her about three or four years ago because she partnered with a, um, it was more so about the quote unquote gospel artist who partnered with Nicki Minaj to do the song. Um, the, the, the artist, their, their theology is very much questionable. Um, I, I'm on, I honestly don't think that they truly believe the gospel. I just got to put that out there. But I wrote so so I I'm not a Barb or whatever her group is called. I'm I'm not a I'm not a Nicki Minaj fan, but I am a reasonable human human being. And you know, she made some valid points um concerning needing to research the vaccine more. I, I did not appreciate how people on Twitter were telling her, well, you're rich. Um, what other questions do you have? You you have doctors and other experts at your disposal to get the answers. Why are you? I'm like, Give the lady time to do whatever research she needs to do. She just had a child. Um, she has other things going on with, you know, between she and her husband. And she's a, you know, global superstar. She may not have had the time to really look into this the way others have. So um, so I just thought it was weird, but her the thing, I I actually agree with her the, the throughout the whole thing. I think just the conversation she was having with her fans, she tends to be more transparent and and, and more um approachable, I guess you could say, with her with her fan base. And so I appreciated the conversation she was having with them. And you would think that the liberal side of things would, would have acknowledged how she was telling people, hey, if you need to feed your family and, you know, they tell, tell you you need the vaccine to do that, then get the vaccine. She was saying that, um, but they didn't care. Um, they, the fact that she said that she wanted to do it on her terms triggered a lot of people. And then, of course, they found the one thing to make her look silly, which was the, you know, <laughs> The, the anecdote the about swollen, her friend. Yeah, yeah, that whole yeah. thing. Um, the but swollen was, tea. Yeah, even with that, I wasn't really, it was hilarious. But even with that, I wasn't offended <laughs> by it because we all do that. Like, oh no, I heard, at least, I, at least I do. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But when we're trying to figure things out, you know, I heard this happen, so I, I need to look at this a little bit more. So I don't see, I didn't see the harm. And I mean, I would, I don't think it was wise for her to put her cousin's friend's information out there. Right. But I think she was probably just in the moment and just having this, conversation with her fans and just kind of that's that's how I saw it I should say I don't know what her actual intentions were but um they came and she's a liar she's spreading disinformation I'm like or she's just figuring it out and um she just wasn't given the the room to do that and then um they they shut her down but what be, what came out of it was a larger issue which is the media silencing anyone who either questioned the vaccine or spoke any type of truth um, that they don't want to get out. And so, um, I think that's where a lot of, uh, what am I, I'm going to say liberals, not liberals, uh, uh, conservatives came in. I think a lot of the conservative crowd came in when she began to talk about, wait a minute, is this even America anymore? Um, she did this live stream where she talked about how, well, you know, being raised in um, Trinidad, her either someone, either her mother or grandparents or someone told her to be grateful that which you know, in America, she could, go to church openly because in certain places you couldn't do that and so she she kind of spoke to a larger issue but of course the media just kept honing in on the cousin's friend and it's just making the whole thing right. crazy but she she spoke as the kids say facts um about being silenced and and we see that happening i mean of, of, of course these are principalities at work that are trying to suppress the truth and um so i definitely agree with her sentiment on that i don't agree with a lot of things uh the Nicki Minaj is involved in, including how she responded to some certain things, of course, her language and all of that in dealing with it. But the the basic point she made about being silenced for asking questions um, or for even, you know, possibly not wanting to go along with the get along gang um, and being uh, canceled because of that. Um, so I, I agree with her there. I, I definitely I, I don't want to say I had her back, but. I, I told, but when I saw that Tucker Carlson spoke about her, spoke about her in his segment, and then she tweeted the segment and that's okay. You know, liberals were like, Wah! you know, trigger, you know, so, yeah. but everything just kind of went crazy. And I was like, I need a break. Like the internet is wild. Yeah, yeah. So I just took it. It's wild. Break. Yeah. I agree with everything you're saying. And I, th I think with, you know, Nicki Minaj, like, you know, sometimes like celebrities and, you know, it's just, 
it's hard to tell. Are there, is this just an act? Are you just, is this, you know, is this a play or is this genuine? And, you know, like, like the, the, the tone that she had, the disposition that she had was like, like, it, like it's scary. You know, people are afraid to say anything for being silenced or what's, and, you know, at first I thought, like, I remember when I was listening to a clip of that, I think I was, I was, uh, I was listening to either Matt Walsh or, or Michael Knowles and they played a clip and I'm hearing, you know, Nicki Minaj's voice and, and it's, it sounds kind of dramatic, kind of emotional talking about like, she, you know, she can't, like she's shocked. She's shocked, you know, that they're trying to suppress people. You can't even ask a question. You can't even take a little time. You can't disagree or anything. And she sounds so shocked. And I'm thinking she's just playing for the cameras. This is just a celebrity. And then it hit me. I thought, oh, wait, um, raging, immoral, sexual revolution pushing liberals this is their first time that they've experienced what we as conservative Christians have been experiencing for years. So she probably actually, I don't think she was acting. I think Nicki Minaj probably was shocked. It's the first time she woke up to the reality that, 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 that her, her team, because it is still her team, but her team that she's been promoting by her licentiousness, by her immorality, by all these things, that that team that she's been promoting and leading, all of a sudden she realized how heinous and how wicked, uh, how much of bullies they actually, and it's, and it's a powerful revelation. Everybody, we all have this at some point of our life um, because it's called, if nothing else, it's called conversion. Right. So, right. You were once Ephesians two, but you were, were like them at one point, you know, children of darkness and, you know, dead in your sins and trespasses. And so uh, we all have that moment where, where God wakes us up. And I'm not saying Nikki Minaj, I'm not saying this was a conversion, but I'm just saying we all have that moment for the Christian, at least where we wake up and we realize um, cause, cause we thought, see, nobody is sitting in a corner. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Dr. Fauci, but other than him, nobody's sitting in a corner, you know, even, even, you know, Joe Biden, he's not sitting in a corner laughing maniacally. He's sitting in a corner watching Matlock, but, but you know, nobody is, is just sitting in a corner ha, 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 because nobody ever thinks they're the bad guy. That's not right. So we grow up watching Disney movies and all this kind of, and everything's so black and white and plain. You can tell who the bad guy is because he has, you know, he has a, a red face and funny horns and, and, you know, but in real life, everybody thinks they're on the right side of history. Everybody thinks they're moral. Everyone thinks they're the good guy. And, and so when you, when God opens your eyes and you have that revelation of, oh my goodness, like I'm the bully. Right. Like, I don't know if you saw this. So on Netflix, I watched, you know, and I'm, I'm not endorsing Netflix. And I honestly, I feel guilty every time I pay for it. And so all my listeners who are judging me right now, I, I will probably eventually cancel my Netflix prescription, um, you know, subscription. Pray, pray for me. But, I, you know, I, one show that I really did like that I watched on it was the, you know, the um, the karate show from the karate kid that they remade uh, Cobra Kai. And and basically it's like. The, the thing that was so eye-opening and everybody's like, oh my gosh, you're right, is they, they, took, they took, you know, the two main characters from the movies and, and now it's like 30 years later and they're showing it from, from the viewpoint, from the perspective of, of the guy who in the original movies was the bully. Um, that he was bullying uh, Daniel's son. Daniel's son, you know, was the hero and the good guy. And he just wanted to do what was right. And there was this horrible bully that was always picking on him. And now you're seeing it. He's all grown up. His life is a wreck. And you're seeing it from his perspective, what happened. And, you, and, and, and they're doing it through this lens of, oh, maybe Daniel's son was actually the real bully. That, you know, maybe, maybe Danny was a real bully. And, and so I say all that to say, you know, and everyone's having this, whoa, that's, man, that's deep, you know, about the karate kid, you know, and, but, but in real life, in the land of the living in reality, that happens all the time that, that each of us, it's, it's called being humbled. It's called being humbled that each of us, we, we come to recognize I've been playing for the wrong team. I, I've been, you know, talking about the bullies, the fascists, you know, the, these conservatives, these, and then all of a sudden I realize I'm the bully. I'm the one who is, who is forcibly, you know, uh, uh, putting a mask on a two-year-old on a plane as he's screaming and crying and gasping for air. I'm the one saying that fathers have, uh, can't feed their kids and have to lose their job if they won't get um, them and their wife, and, you know, in injected with something that, that really, you know, uh, the verdict's still out. And, and so all of a sudden, everybody has kind of that moment. And I think for Nicki Minaj, that was, that was her moment. And I think she was truly shocked because I think it might be the first moment she's had where she yeah. realized I've I been playing on the wrong team. I was praying for her because I was like, wow, look, I saw a lot of conservatives go, oh, yeah, we just watched Nicki Minaj get red pilled, right? You know, in, you know, <laughs> in real time. And I'm thinking like, what if she was actually being converted? Like, 
how much more amazing would it have been if she was being converted to Christ? You know what I mean? So I do pray that, you know, again, just like a lot of um, Black folks, whether they're African-American or from another country that came to America, a lot of us have some type of experience with the church or with the body. Some, I'm not saying it's correct. And a lot, you know, a lot of times it's not, but um, there's something there. There's a, there's a seed there. And I just pray that the Lord would water that. And um, Amen. Amen. Because God, God saved Nicki Minaj. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. That would be beautiful. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, would you consider supporting this ministry by giving a donation of any amount? You can do so by going to our website, rightresponseministries.com. Let's be frank. Sadly, many evangelical pastors and leaders are serving as nothing more than water carriers for the political left. Just as those in the political left hate you, just like those corporations that are left-leaning hate you, these pastors and evangelical leaders hate you. I know that's a strong, a strong statement to make. I'm aware of that, but it's true. They don't care about your personal liberty. They don't care about your freedom. They want you to love your neighbor at the expense of biblical truth, even if it means bearing false witness. That's not us. We're different. We're not the only ones. I don't want to be arrogant. God has reserved a remnant for himself in this time as he has all other ages and all other places, but they are few and far between. It's called a remnant for a reason. We need your help. We want to stand up to tyranny. We want to stand up to this new left totalitarian regime. We want to defend Christians and people, the salt of the earth, who love America and who love God's word. But we can't do it without your help. If you're not prepared or able to give a financial gift, one way that you can support this ministry is by simply subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking the bell so that you'll be notified as we come out with new content. You can also help us by sharing our content on all your social media platforms so that more people can hear the truth of God's word with courage and fidelity. Thanks for tuning in. God bless.